Hello guys, my name is BlueDigit, and I'm streaming also at the same time during this, so if this seems kind of discombobulated, kind of long, it's just something that I wanted to bring you guys on, because I played this game a long time ago, and uh, I want you guys to know me as a person, I feel, um, and this is one of the things that, if you were to watch one video, this one I'm probably going to be the most emotional, very one of the most honest I'm going to be with you, and that is because this is my favorite game of all time. It might, it might have changed, but I mean, every single year, I look back at this game because of how amazing it made me feel the first time, and how much I can relate to it. Um, you see, there's many games I like playing, horror games, because, you know, it's something that is fun, you can joke about, and also that the fact that you can invoke emotion into someone through a, a means of hard drive, you know, like, a, a screen that you're staring, at, you're staring at somehow can still invoke so much emotion into you that it makes you feel fearful, you know? Or a game that defines all odds and, you know, it basically um, changes or it comes up with something new that nobody's ever done before. Such as Finals of Freddy's, you know, that that blew up. Because, you know, no, nobody ever actually did the animatronic scare thing, you know? That was cool. But when it comes to when people can actually invoke a good story that it makes you actually feel the emotion, that's something that I don't see often. And this game, this game did for me. So I'm just going to shut up. I'm going to get into the game, and I, I hope you enjoy. It's probably going to be a long game. It's about ten hour, an hour long, I believe. But just hop on in and on as you want. So hope you enjoy. And yeah. Can't Charles, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get into this and not be as cringy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh, this one, this one, those games you gotta get immersed into, you know. Hi there. Thank you very much. Hello. For <laughs> beginner's guide. My name is Davy Reedon. I wrote the Stanley Parable, and while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff. And his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just <laughs> I love that box. Coda learning the <laughs> basics of building a 3D environment. Man, what I, like is that I am lagging bad. <laughs> the aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of I like the only blocks in... What is, was going yeah, that's strange. He was building this. this is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but... That they, they are fascinating. Don't diss his work. <laughs> we all love Coda. <laughs> I want us to see past the game himself. <laughs> oh, man. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008. Coda starts making these games. And he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, a recluse. Point, he jokingly <laughs> renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y 
W-R-E-D-E-N at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. <laughs> Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is Sorry, I know I can't talk much, so completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Yeah, this game on if you're a creative person, this really it gets at you. This game emotionally will Alright, it's finally I have a moment to talk. If you couldn't hear, yeah, so basically this is a story about him trying to find out more about his friend that he thinks essentially gave up on this dream, this passion that he had, and his drive is selfless and he's trying to basically, in a sense, save his friend from failing. It's it's a beautiful story. I that always gets me. Damn it! <laughs> what? <laughs> what? This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. It is. Where do I go? All right, Whisper Machine. How do I? Oh, there we. Go. How can I not find that? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> of course. Of course, you go down the wrong path. <laughs> Be my Minecraft gun. Aw, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I can't shoot anymore. Oh, my. <laughs> I, don't I don't remember that. Oh, I get of, of course, the door opens, but... <laughs> oof. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere. But then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Koda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Man, this game this game just has so much like psychological and symbolic value to what it, whatever it says. And honestly, it just, it just gets me every single time. I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. <laughs> but no, he points at so many things that you wouldn't notice. And then, then there's also things that you would notice that the game doesn't point out. And it, it's just... Mm, mm, the game's so amazing. It really is. Honestly. <laughs> Apparently, this space station has a labyrinth on it. I... Uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Thank, thanks, Daddy-o. <laughs> okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine, and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Okay. So is this the moral dilemma? Like, am I going to, or is it just... Um... I think obviously you had to do that. For a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug oh? somewhere. What is this that? Is what <laughs> instead. the beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. Oh my god. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, but what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. 
So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that <sighs> this go in all sorts of directions. Since I've ever played this, Let's this makes a lot of sense to me. The first game he made after leaving this one behind. Okay, Daddy, let's do it. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, I can't move. Oh my! Oh, I can yep. go back. There we go. In this game, you can only walk backwards. The past was behind her. That's so cool. This is an interesting concept, actually, for a game. You know, like only going, only. Be that's so interesting. Only being able to go. What? So it's a short but the future could not be seen. The past was behind her, but the future could not be seen. The game, Why does the future keep changing? Focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. When she stops and looks, it becomes clear. This is so interesting. But if the future is always behind her. How will she find the strength? Strength to what? To confront it. Thought, it says what it wants to say and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Which to me is why it works. Because it strength. gets out quick. Okay, next one. Oh boy, another horror game, guys. Oh boy, oh boy, you know, you know you love it. Them, them good old horror games, am I right? <laughs> Spoopy. Oh my god. You are now entering. <laughs> entering what? <laughs> and that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Nonsense in nearly every direction. Titles like this one at the start of his games. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? Man. But no, like, this game... I'm just gonna stop right here. Like, you could see so much symbolism from the game already. And I mean, if the game, in the end, like, it, it gives you a good chunk of, like, from the narrator telling you what happens, like, then you get it. But I mean, obviously, you need to take apart many things, okay, when you're watching this gameplay, okay? Because I'm not going to talk much. I'm just going to enjoy it for myself. And I'm going to say a few things, but I mean, mostly, this game, when I first played it, I think it was 2015. And, you know, this was before I moved away. So, I mean, this, this made a huge impact to me and my life. It really is one of those games where if you're a creative person, if you're a passionate person about anything, if you have goals, determinations in life, this game will destroy you, but it's in a good way almost. If you've seen any other, like, just sad but inspiring shows, then you'll understand the same meaning. Devilman Crybaby, Game of Thrones, they all have that, like, sad, terrible moments in them, but there's a reason for them, and that's what this, this story does. Um... And, I mean, like I said, he'll give you an ending, but in the end, you, you truly need to just look around and, like, deeply get into this, because that's what's so good about it. And especially the title. If you look into the title, if you just understand the title, it means so much. It truly does. Am I slowly down? No. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, <laughs> the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why... If code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. No, I'm not entering. No. No, I'm not going to enter. Because, because you know what? I'm I'm pro gamer, okay? I, I don't need no answer. I don't need your pity, okay? I never said I need your pity. Do you think I need your pity? No, I, can I jump off? <gasps> oh, shit. Who <laughs> jumped up? No, I'm, I'm going to enter. Yeah, and I'm not. I, I hope you knew I was not just going to do that. Now, you, what? The game is nothing but giant blocks of text explaining what happens. You walk around talking. 
people down from pursuing their hopes and dreams. A normal game where you have to scream into a mic every 15 seconds nice to keep playing. And filled with little ideas for a key in one game unlocks the door into a completely separate, uh, separate game. A series of la lavish Kudo manuals come with the game giving you incorrect... He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can Pursue to surrender. To get there. This is so cool. This is so. Oh my god, already. I just. Mm. Already. Because, I mean, like I said, here's symbolism already. No, it didn't. Damn it. Oh. Already set fish. Damn. It gets me. That gets me. Because already, like, it showed you going up a long trail. And then, obviously, there's going to be points when you're going up this hill that, you know, things seem bleak. The world seems, you know, darkened. And, you know, you may come to a complete stop. But if you keep going, if you keep pushing on, despite what's pushing you back. In this case, you know, the higher you go, maybe the altitude and, like, you know, the, the wind. But if you get to the very top... Already, I mean, it's just, it's stuff like that, you know? There's just so much symbolism. And when he's talking about Coda, like, that was... He decided not to show that game because he didn't want people to see his soft side, you know? It, it showed truly who he was as a person, and it... God. Oh, already, I, I love this game. I, I love this game. Have I said that already? Have I said that? I don't think I have. I, I love this game. God. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. I'm too stupid. <laughs> Don't <forget> hey! We're <laughs> going to see this puzzle again soon. We are? See it a lot. You know, I'm a little concerned why there's these holes here. Is there some, what's on the other side of this wall? Hmm? <laughs> Hmm, is there something? Is there something dirty? Hmm? 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 <laughs> no, but. Alrighty. No, just this game. There's so much symbolism, so much things that you can take from it. And I, mean, I make a point to always revisit, like, this game in some kind of way every year because of how much it means to me, how much it's it's done for so me. Seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve the puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. Alright. Now I'm going to modify the game again, so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Are you ready for the cool stuff? Yeah, yeah, you ready? Here we go. Yeah. How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? If your role is not to understand, like th th that's another cool thing. It's, it, this one's another like that. That one's the exact opposite, basically saying if you always look at one thing, you're never going to truly know what's on the outside unless you keep looking, unless you keep trying to like you know get outside the box, you know. Um, it's just another misconception, just like the other game, except, you know, opposite. Things can be switched around, you know? Um, like I said, this game just has so much symbolism. It's just, it, this way, th this game does it in a way of a story. You're now exiting. Aha. Uh -huh. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in. Some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. 
beautiful game. It, it's it's a beautiful game. The bigger picture, am I right? The great and lovely descent. Well, that's a pretty house. Kind of uh, kind of creepy if you ask me. To be honest. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Every okay. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So, in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. The streetwise fool. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well and oh has my. certain things that it does poorly. Uh. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. Is there anything That's else? I, I want to check it out because the games are set in finished large, flat, empty this room. Game. Is just because he's working with what the engine does well. Damn, I I wish there's a way I could like. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're gonna end up making. Okay. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear boxy corridors. The street wise like I said, there's a bunch of symbolism, so you gotta understand, like like why would the door that opens be right here? You know? It's just like, like I said, this game has so much symbolism. It's it's unbelievable. Alright, so I'm gonna see if I can just pull off one of these uh Oh, Oh, am I, are you tripping out yet? Are you tripping out, fool? Here we go. We're getting into this. We're getting into this, fam. Are you, are you, oh, jeez. Oh, okay, I don't, I was about to just jump off. <gasps> Ooh, this is actually kind of getting, like, cluster... Not, um, uh, I got a huge fear of heights, man. So, like, just jumping down like this kind of... Kind of freaks you out. Ah... Uh. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, dude, it freaks me out because like there's a little motion blur thing in the. F mm. I don't like that look. It freaks me out. Oh, 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 dude, it freaks me out so much. All right, uh, dude, I don't like the edges of Jane. Mm, it freaks, freaks me out, man. Jeez. It gives me the like I can feel it in my gut. It's like, it's it's like, eh, I don't like it. It's like I'm having like a straight up brain aneurysm every single time. <laughs> eh. No, but I mean, it's. It, is anybody else have like a fear of heights? Like I I I feel like I'm the only one. I like my friends are like you are so scared of heights. And it's like yeah, I'm terrified of heights. <laughs> all right, but I feel like although like I bet you like if you just like missed you, it wouldn't matter. I mean, I I haven't ever missed before, but I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure if you did, it, it wouldn't matter. Well, that is interesting. Oh, there's like an invisible barrier. That that's <laughs> it's a force. <laughs> Gandalf. <laughs> Honestly, I never understood that. Some like I. I would have guessed that every single time you fall, it always leads to something new, but like I said, it's symbolism. Whoa. Oh my. <laughs> Here we go, boys. <laughs> this is this prison. Funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. Strange. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, oh, I can't. Whether Dang it. Game ought to actually be playable. Whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? 
And so we just got into heated arguments over it. And there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. Now, if you listen to that, what he just said there, there, he get into heated arguments about if a game was playable or not, okay? And basically, what it means is a game in this, in in Koda's world is art, okay? And if it's playable, then that means the player can, in in their sense, do whatever you want in that world, okay? Whatever that world's area is, they can do whatever you want, okay? Because that, that's how you know media like views things. Like if I can't do this, then I, I then it's not playable, you know. And be, people always get into, um hard arguments about that, anyways, you know. And like you'll see that in reviews and stuff. But I mean, when it comes to um this, obviously Coda, he believed, you know what? If you want a playable game, then here, this is the only thing that's truly going to be playable that I offer, that I believe anyone would say, because playable, that's not what a game always is meant to be. Sometimes it's meant for you to struggle. Some games try for you not to win, but that's what makes them a game. Because it can't be a game if there's no adversity. Anyhow. So, I am going to... Is does that open? I don't, I don't think so, yeah. But no, it's just... It's a beautiful game. It is... It's a work of art! <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, these holes are freaking me out. There, there's, there's some kind of reason to this house. It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Alrighty. Can I see anything out here? Nah, no. But no, I mean, like I said, this game. Um, I mean, it's really interesting because, like, like I said, it, it's it's two people going at what they believe in, you know, and it's it's truly. Um, the more you look into it, it's more a story and a clash of morals, like in life. What truly defines person like what truly matters and oh this is one of my favorite parts oh hell yeah yo la where did you come up from above what was that okay oh yes and poppy all right where did you did you come up from buzz what was up there Yes, there is a world stamped with whiteness. Um. Mm. I would say the enormous prison because if you're going to stay in there, that's what, you know, they'd be looking for. Yeah. That's the world above? You've been there? Now, this is important. Did you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? Yes, I did. That was literally the last thing I did before coming here. No, I don't remember having to go through any puzzle. I prefer not to tell you. After all, we only just met. So it depends. If, you, if you're going to be middle ground, evil, or good. This, this is basically the question right now, okay? Um, Because the first question is just... To, to feel like you had options, okay? This is the actual what matters. Um I if it were me, I'd probably tell the truth. I, I don't see why I wouldn't, you know. 
Or I would say number three, because I would be maybe skeptical of people just saying, hmm. And pay attention to this. Look at how their faces are boxes. Yeah, I'm choosing number one. Again? Perfect. Now, tell us how you solved it. Tell us the solution. Tell us how to get to the other side. I'd be honest and say, trust me, you don't want to go over there. Because I'm not going to say, I don't remember. I didn't remember because I remember. And then I didn't solve it. Someone let me in. Yeah, I mean, that, that'd be a lie too, so. Oh, no, but I do. We do. We need to get there. Do you understand? It is the most important place in the world. We have to escape this prison. There must be an ending. I promise you, there's nothing I want more. Interesting. And look at that. that that's the one of the coolest mechanisms. Because if you look at their heads, basically it's supposed to identify as what we are as humans as well. I mean, also look at their bodies. I mean, you see little, like, parts. Okay. Um... It's supposed to say basically how we keep putting on different faces for whatever we're doing. Whatever makes us. Hello, how did you. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello, how did you get there? Was there a puzzle I had to pass through? Yes. Do you want to know how to solve it? No, I've been right here this entire time. I didn't have to solve a puzzle to get here. So, no. I suggest you go and see the puzzle sometime. It's not meant to be solved. But you can sit in the black space in the middle. So, here's the two things I think that matters. Why would I sit in the black space? And who are you? Those are the two things that matter. Okay. Now, the black space, I'm guessing, just means, like, that's what I, that's the place you go if you give up, you know? But who are you? That's a question. So I'm going to probably go with who are you? Just go hang out there in that blackness for a bit. He may not like it at first, but you'll it'll grow on you eventually. But that's the thing. They didn't they don't answer who are you? And I'll get to that shortly. I'll get to that shortly. Also notice how the fireplace is behind you. And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Alrighty, here we go. <gasps> oh, first, I first thought it was both ways for a second. That's gonna freak out. <gasps> it's the beginning title screen, Nate. Oh, uh, it's so cool. It's a lamp post. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but. For some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. <laughs> he wants a destination. Which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Alright, notice how the lamppost is all alone there? It was the brightest thing. And it stood tall, but it was surrounded by darkness and by bleak lonely you know this game is connected to the internet as you walk around you can leave notes all the notes you see are left be by other players hmm but no you th that's basically what that lamppost I believe means and and like I said this game is just amazing man you should buy it on Steam God <laughs> nice room not <laughs> So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. <sighs> All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. How do you beat this game? This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly no point after to this. I met him, 
at a weekend game jam in Sacramento where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just whoa, so holy shit! <laughs> so right away I was like, Can you guys hear me? Friends with this person. In retrospect, Hello. I was probably a bit too pushy, trying to get his attention. Reasonable. I was over enthusiastic. Everyone but read he was this. Very gracious about it and very hey. This and place makes me sad. Oh, feel right. free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing I want to tell you a secret. Once upon a time, I did. Either way, to find fun. To me, they can be a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts How is this? and hmm. feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that I was just I just saw a flying plane gun. Let me tell you, it was the most Majestic thing I've seen. I don't think I've ironic, like living this game, because how alone Coda off I'll never be able to see nothing as beautiful as that again. That. I'm crying now and plan on ripping my eyes out. I must honest, go do that now. Really what the fuck? That I could just play someone's game. Don't be afraid. Do care. In their head and, and get to know this game is so nice. I would like it when I could. In person socializing. Do you feel like a hero yet? Get to know you through your work. Cool. What? Cool cavern, bro. We're running like out of space. Soon so we will suffocate. Is because it felt like they let me have that too many messages. I felt Why? Like he was inviting me personally into his world. The guy over there wrote <laughs> much wrong. I'd rather be doing literally anything other than this. Hmm. This does seem kind of lonely. I am gonna read these all, by the way. <laughs> what this shit is this cavern? <laughs> um, bore. Yeah, this is kind of boring to be honest. I can assure you, guarantee. Yep. Yeah, nope. Not reading that. All right. Oh man, this is boring. I feel so bad there. I said this is late. Yeah. Butt ass butt. <laughs> oh man. I need to go to the freaking bathroom. I'm, I'm gonna just keep, you know, popping on these things. Like I said, I wanna probably see. I wanna get every single one. Oh, there's more. Okay. I'm gonna get them all! I'm gonna catch them all! Because I uh, need to see. You see, I'm not. I don't give up on my on my good old pokies, pokies mon. <laughs> Damn it! This is. Mm, I want to. All right, you know what? Fine, but I'm not getting them all. I'm not getting them all. But no, he's right. I mean, this is. This really is. It's it's kind of it's it's lonely, but in the same sense, it's one of those things where. Even when everyone is around you, even when you hear the whispers, even when you know people fade, there's always something to take away from it. And even if you stand alone, there's always there's always something that's going to last, you know. Maybe it's just me, but I mean that that's what I get from this game, and it's interesting. It's very interesting. There must be a reason for it, though. This terrible. Terribly kept. I beat the game. More room? At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents jump! an idea. Oh, I can't. Are you kidding me? At the time that he was made. I wish I could jump. And the puzzle is that a way sucks. of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. In each of his games, after exploring a Interesting. Event, you know, he might find Close your eyes and wish for it really badly. Place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution. Almost he at the end. He understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. Does this puzzle have a solution? Oh my god, I've been here for literally an hour. What the fuck do I do? Help! Developer, answers please. Help! <laughs> and because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces. Before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment. A few seconds to reflect on 
and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. That was loose. That's interesting, because look, there's so many, like, hopeless people in here. Just, uh, no solution. There's no second switch, you know. You get so far, and even when, you know, you actually finally open up the door, and you, you know, you're, you're, you're stuck. There's so many people that give up. But sometimes, if you just push, maybe a little bit harder, you'll find a way through. That's what that's supposed to symbolize. Oh, that's in front. Yeah, I was gonna say that's like ah, <laughs> cancer. Eddie leaves notes. <laughs> I'll throw ask that when it leaves a note. <laughs> Are you there? Please say something. It can be anything. I just need you to say something. Talk to me, please. Why are you having so much fun? Talk. Speak. 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 Speech. Speak. 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 That's cool. That's cool. Porn stars die okay, too. This one is tough. It's gonna kind of just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. I don't remember this. Porn stars die too. What the? F oh. That scared me for a minute. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> but don't worry, porn stars die too. <laughs> what the hell is the name of that? Who thought that was a g <gasps> Porn stars die too. Yes. Yes, it's my favorite game, guys. Porn stars die too. <laughs> Not porn stars, like, die too. I mean, like, porn stars die too. <laughs> what? So, this is it. The whole game. And there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it. You just walk to the end of a hallway. Except, for some reason, Cody gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's gonna start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, cool. Here's version two. What? What furniture ought to go into the center of the room? How about a TV surround sound? A refit... A giant hole of ground. Honestly, how I never chose number three. I said number one the first time I did, so I want to try number three. Put a let's put a huge giant, giant damn hole in the ground. Let's do it. Oh, it doesn't do it anyway. <laughs> okay, what about along the wall of the room? Um, <laughs> ten stoves. I want ten stoves. Ten stoves everywhere. Just throw them all. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't listen to me. I love it. I think we should light the room a bit. Uh. Oh, I need the Tesla coils. I want them Tesla coils, baby. Yeah, every corner. <laughs> yeah, and a table. You need a table. Tables were invented. <laughs> I'll let me just say, <laughs> what the f What is my character, honestly? Whoa. There's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness' sake. So, okay, he throws it out and starts over. This time, he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. Hello, please walk. Oh, I love the soundtrack. <laughs> I love the soundtrack so much. Oh my god. Uh, because, because, okay, so he fails. Okay, his his idea was that you know eventually when you're looking out and you're afraid to get somewhere and you know eventually you're going to lead yourself down that path if you keep fretting about it. So you just gotta do what you want to do. And that's why porn stars always porn stars die too was the story. Okay. But then, you know, people didn't like that. So he tried again. He tried again with something. And people still don't di didn't get it. He said, oh my god. I love it. I love the story so much. Please watch forward. Hell yeah, I will. This guide will enable you to escape any prison environment. Oh, will it? <laughs> oh, 
follow the instructions carefully. Take this, take care that you remember each step. First, click on this table. Okay, Sam Poppy. <gasps> Good. Go over to the photo frame and click on it and turn it slightly. Boop. Now, turn the floor lamp in this room off and then turn it back on. Hey, hey, what if I don't want to? Hmm? Ever thought about that? Hmm? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be an asshole. Now, go to the left side of the sofa and move it over a little. Well, wait, sofa, what? Sofa, th this. Which sofa are we talking about here? Okay. Now, finally, touch the selves. Shelves. Oh, are these shelves? That's it. In a real prison, the escape will now open. Return to start to be taken back to your prison. What? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Move. What's that supposed to mean? Return. That's so weird. Oh my god. Now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside and the outside is the inside. Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen of them. Personally, I think it's awful to watch this, to see a person basically unraveling through their work. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop, that particular mechanism of defense against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. He's not so giving he's up. Going going, he going, wants going, to keep going. doing this. And then he hits on something. And he um. it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. Oh my god, this game's making me jerk. The reason that, that's so beautiful is because... Okay, okay. So, like I said, it's a story of two people, okay? Obviously, he doesn't think... You know, he's like, why does he keep sticking to this prison idea? It's stupid, you know? But he keeps trying and trying and trying because he doesn't want to give up on it. He thinks that this is going to be... He wants to convey a message. And people aren't getting it. So, you know, if, if they're not going to get it, then he tries again. If they don't like it, he tries, he tries again. And he tries again. And he tries again. And he tries again. And it's coded for you. You know? And he's a determined... Mm. That's what's so good about the story. Because it's a story of two people trying to understand each other. You know? And it, it, it's cool because there's two sides of the coin. Really? And, I mean, it's just a beautiful story. So much symbolism. It's like a good old hot cake. You know, it's like it's like one of those funnel cakes, okay? But like a really nice, good funnel cake you get out of a carnival. You're like, mmm, that was a good funnel cake. That's what this feels like. <laughs> oh man, good, good game. Alrighty. Hello. Oh, I <laughs> who is this? Hey. It's me. I'm you from after you escaped the prison. What? You're me? So you're trapped in this prison too. It's a conversation. And so this is what Coda wants. I was to, be able to talk hmm. to someone, to share what's on his mind and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But That's where I am right now. In this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. You know, all of these games so far are Coda talking to himself. Actually, I'm already forgetting what it's like to be. It's strange, but in the way I kind of like. Mm. I'll do three. Do you feel any different? I feel this magical power in my body. <gasps> Like shouting jutsu! No, um, sometimes I'm scared. I'll get out and things will 
be exactly the same as before. Actually, it does change. I don't feel like the same person at all. No. I'm really the same person now as I was back then. That's a... Hmm, that's a toughie. Oh, good. That's nice to hear. Makes me feel really happy. Too. Yeah. I'm still me, but... I'm not somehow... It's hard to describe. Wait, if you're me, then how did you get a call from another version of you when you were trapped? No, I think I'm the first person to call back. I'll be honest. Then you can tell me how to get out? Maybe I can come find you. What do I have to do? To get out, all you have to do is be sincere. To get out, all you need to do is tell me how you feel right now. <gasps> oh my god! Okay, you need to be sincere. Basically, this game's saying... We are talking, okay, right now. It's, um... The prison is figuratively... You're talking to yourself because... You're trapped within your own prison. And you're asking yourself these questions because... You're trying to release yourself from that prison you're in right now. And you're just basically reflecting on past experiences. Because you're in it again. It's such a... God, I love this game. What? That will free me? How does that work? Listen. You can't know until you're out. But I promise it works. Yeah. You gotta come. Sincere about what? That's exactly what you need to figure out in order to escape. I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay. Wouldn't that be nice? Beautiful. Awesome game. God. So what would it look like if Coda wanted to make a game about talking to someone other than himself? <sighs> okay. Alright, I remember this one. Oh man, with the Himalayas. Whoa! Maybe this environment <laughs> is meant to represent Coda's puzzle, with the two doors on either side and a dark transitional space between. <gasps> oh, that's cool. That's a cool way to think about it. Okay, that's creepy. Can I can I go? No? Okay. Hey Gerald, how are we? We're we gonna Well my goodness, I'm glad as heck that you all showed up. Thought I might be having to clean this entire house by myself and right miserable that might have been. Everyone knows lonesome hands make lousy homes. Don't worry about me. I'll place this nice I'll gladly stay the night here. Yeah. Including this new and improved chat system, which he started using from this point Well now you just might be getting a little ahead of yourself then, no? Why don't we start cleaning, and then you can decide whether you could do it all night. Alright, so I gotta clear the table. Two months. Two mu two months my ass. Alright, so basically, much nicer. That's a table I want to see. Now, would you please run to the bathroom and make a bed? Alrighty. So, wait, run to the bed. Oh, the bedroom. I don't like Yeah, run to the bathroom and make a bed. Make the bed, okay? <laughs> Just grab the toilet and turn into a bed. <laughs> Alrighty. While you're at it, why don't you straighten out the rug a little bit? Oh, yes, sin poppy. Oh, the little details matter. Mm. Do you enjoy being a house cleaner? Well, I don't enjoy it so much as I need it. While I'm working, I kind of feel a calm that... I kind of feel calm that rests in the pity of my ribcage. My soul just can't be soothed in any ways, it seems. Which I guess is all that matters. Oh, and then a tidy couch. Would you straighten out the pillows on the sofa there? <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Yeah. 
<laughs> oh dear. Looks like someone spilled a drink all over the couch. Maybe mop that up as long as you're over there. Oh. Oh, th this? This, the, 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 this is, um, this is just my, um, I feel compelled to share an incredibly cheesy personal insight. You okay with that? Alright, um. Make it especially cheesy. Yeah, that, uh, I'll do that. <laughs> uh, dot, dot, dot. Oof. No. No, it was stupid. Sorry, never mind. Hey, these dishes... No, what? Tell me. Tell me. Hey, hey, tell, tell, tell me. Look, tell, tell. You got, you got like a really weird ass crack. It's, it's like. Tell me, you're not stupid. You're, you're Mr. Clean. You're, you're, you're like, you're Mr. Clean. Clorox, Mr. C no. Last I checked, the tub needs to be clean. How about you scrub it down the best? Hey, this is your job. What, what, what? No need to be perfect. We're all human. You see the irony there? Because because he was too scared to tell you, and yet he told... You see you see the irony? Anyway, there are still books scattered on the floor of the bedroom. If so, would you put them back on the sh... Uh, okay, bedroom, yeah. <laughs> Cleaning sim number one. Hell yeah. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> now then, how about you come over here and clear these dishes After off the, the table? Intense set of prison games. This house cleaning level almost feels like cleansing. It's the moment after a particularly difficult house cleaning so difficult. How do you do it? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> That's why I'm making you do it. <laughs> That's <laughs> darling. Let me tell you something. Your house is only as difficult to clean as you are. If you're finding the work hard, maybe you have to bit of housekeeping to do before you come to work. Ha! Huh. And here we go on another lecture. Of course I would. Don't you worry about all that nonsense. For now, just soothe out the rug in the head bedroom. This was the only one that he called me up to ask me to come over and look at it. This was during a period of a few months where he was like grossly happy all the time. Just walked around with a constant smile on his face. Looks like a tub. Okay. I remember this because like, okay. Because I remember running around like having a real dot dot dot. Earlier, when I said I had a really cheesy thought, I was going to say it occurs to me that one's house is all like one's soul. You take care of it, and it takes care of you. <laughs> Don't know why I felt so weird about saying that. But there's a bit of truth in there, is it? No, uh, I'd say that one probably. Yeah. Dot dot dot. Anyway, no! Aw, oh, so, housekeeping. Let's keep doing this. Books. Would you please clean up the books? Thanks. Oh, God. God. Oh, goodness, those pillows are all over the couch. What a real mess. Question. Do you enjoy this? It can't last. The music stops, your companion is gone, it's time to leave. The door at the top of the hill is now open as well. Oh! Again. Dude, the freaking wall is gone. <laughs> in the dark space for too long. You just can't. You have to keep moving. It's how you stay alive. It's just this game is so hard to handle because like I understand a lot of these things. I hope you guys are understanding the symbolism too. I mean that's why this game is so. I mean, it's just it's just a beautiful game because it, it truly it di it digs deep into you and it truly makes you understand what it truly means to be someone that has a soul, has a heart. That what would you do if things get hard and why do you pursue the things that you do? Why do you have the passion to do what you love to do? And how far are you going? Which is the to make that happen. Puzzle doors, right? That sooner or later you have to pick up and move. I really thought that was the point of it. 
No. No. I am love that. Mm. Why did you come here today? Am I the only one? What's in to improve your life? Why did you get another job? Hmm? Was it to make your relationships more meaningful? No. Hmm? You came here to become perfect. This workshop is going to teach you how to be perfect. I want your friends, the people in your life, to look at you and think, Wow, this person is a better human being than I am. Right now, who do you think is about that way in your life? Hmm? Who do you know that is so well developed as a person that they make you feel disgusted with yourself? Compared to whom you feel useless, selfish, ungrateful, I intend to make you to that person. Perfection is within your grasp. And the question is not how do we, but how do we do it effortlessly? This is easy. So easy. It is so easy. Game, Being perfect is effortlessly. Oh. Oh. What the hell? On the way to work, I told. Play as the teacher. And suddenly, you discover that your teacher is just as bigoted and afraid as you are. Oh, and also you can move around the classroom now. I still love you. It's just... Let me tell you right now, if it is, what? This is so hard. It's cause like the listener, no matter what, you like you you just listen, but like as a teacher, there's so much chaos in your life. Yet you still gotta focus on the main goal. It's like you're just being sucked up. Wow. Number one. Let's try number one. You know, I said you won't be happy until you left me. This is for you. And then the listener's like, oh, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Alright. So is there a way I can leave? No. Um, okay. Pretty hard for this one. Oh. I feel like it's one of the most relatable experiences that you can have. Perfection. So, uh, assume that some other person is perfect and totally fulfilled in every way and completely miss all of the little flaws that make them painfully human. I think about this game a lot these days. <gasps> oh, we're reaching the end. No, we're halfway. I think we're halfway through the game. Honestly. What is this? This one took a lot longer than all the others for Coda to make. It was four months between this and the last one. That's twice as long as it took him to make any other game before this, and it's not like it's particularly complex, so I remember I found that a little strange at the time. A stage. Huh. Whoa. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Alright, the performance is beginning. Places, places, in this scene you'll be playing as me. We're at a gathering of professionals. First, you'll start out leaning against this wall. Mmm, good, stay right there. The one across the room in the chair is a professional photographer of animals. It's your dream to photograph animals professionally. This is your one chance to learn something from her, to gain something to succeed. Go on, say something to her. Uh, where's the bathroom? Where is the bathroom? <laughs> yes, where's the bathroom? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, she's happy? You're deflecting. What you're saying is not actually on your mind. So stop dancing around and have a conversation with this person. Do it again. You know, yeah. Here are all my hopes and dreams. Be honest. No, no, no. That's how I said to her at all. You're completely missing the tone of this conversation. I was there, but I knew what I wanted. I was confident. For some reason, it was just a like moment. But I was confident. Maybe you need to feel better about the setting. There's a lot of people around us. I'll give you some props to work with. These cones that bounce when you touch them will represent the people nearby. Now, talk to her again. 
<laughs> Second, say hello. No! Talk to her again, please. <laughs> No, this is this is interesting because like no matter what, like look around, look around this, okay. No matter what, there's always people watching. There's always an audience to perform for, and that's the world for you. You know they're always making you perform. And if you, if you don't do something right, then you gotta try again, again and again. Even if you're honest, you're wrong, because the world doesn't accept that. Hmm. What are some of the sacrifices you've had to make? You're messing it all up again! You'll figure out if this conversation gets that personal that quickly. Do you not realize how important this was for me? I'll never get another opportunity like this again. Everything was writing on this. Hmm. I want to try something. Try something back from the stage. <gasps> Whoa, what? I didn't, dude. Lampy? Lamp? Okay, yes, now this is working. The this is what I like. This eerie premonition of what's going to happen next in Coda's life. The solution to social anxiety. That's to perfect. Fears wonderful. Of having to perform and this having to chase is success, really wonderful. The answer for Coda is to withdraw, to hide himself away. Which is what leads to scenarios like the stairs that slowed you down several games ago. He's doing where great. It just becomes harder and harder to access Coda's inner landscape because he keeps retreating. He just keeps backing away from possible connections to anyone other than himself. And to be honest, I didn't consider it very healthy when I first played this game. You know, it, it looked to me like he was trying to justify the idea of just disconnecting yourself from the world. And that wasn't what I wanted for him or for his games. Because I feel like a lot of his games are inviting me to connect. To connect with this person. To bring him closer. But what can you do? After this, Coda went off and took another five months to make a new game. Wow. Mmm, Morbid Strip. To play this game properly, you must keep your eyes closed. Click to begin the game. No! <laughs> no, okay, here we go. My eyes are closed. Alright, I'm gonna open them because you know what? I don't know. Oh! Oof. Help, I'm blind. I can't see ya. Help, I'm blind! <laughs> oh my, what is. Help! 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 <laughs> what is going on? I don't know what's going on. You should probably help. If you haven't already. I was gonna say, yeah. And there is a solution, by the way. Um. Okay. Am I going to be killed by this giant door? There's a solution? What's going on? I can't see anything. Oh, the door. What's this? <gasps> the, oh. What's this? Somebody stop it. It's a speak saying that is honest. My work is always fun. No, it's not truthful. What? That isn't truthful. Alright, let's try again. Captain, yes. <laughs> What's going on? Alright. The truth. Okay. The only way to stop it is to speak something truth through. I can't keep making these. Yes, that's it. 
That's the truth. Like I said, I was getting concerned. It's straining off, me. He's never been this explicit in his work about exactly what he's thinking. So keep going. Keep talking. But then, even weirder, his work has potentially stopped being an outlet for him. I thought Not it was like going to be having easy. Trouble iterating on ideas, but he literally just can't think of new ideas anymore. And in person, he was being a lot more distant than usual. Like, you know how sometimes a person will just deflect anything that you say in order to keep themselves disconnected all the time. It was that kind of thing. Here was the point in my relationship with Koda where I really started to wonder if he needed my help in some way. Wow. His games are going to get more desperate from here on out. After this game, it's almost six months before he finishes something new. Where am I? Uh, we're in Narnia! <laughs> Where did this island come from? This is really cool! Like, honestly, like... Is that a person? How lovely! It's been some long time since I've talked to anyone. What's wrong? You look lost. Because I am. Hmm. I have nothing to give to my work. Oh no. What happened? Did something change? Either one sounds weird. I'm just going to. Wait. You're looking for a machine? I know where that is. It isn't far. You have to take me to it. You have to <laughs> take me to this machine, if please. The last game <laughs> featured Coda talking explicitly about his creative frustrations. This one turns it up to eleven. Now put yourself in my shoes, playing this. Here's a friend whose work is exhibiting signs of struggle, frustration, anxiety, depression, even, and yet still <gasps> the keeps oh. making games. He keeps. Throwing himself into the grinder even when he clearly doesn't have the energy for it anymore. Why? What is it for? Because he doesn't want to give up. From my perspective at the time and, and just what I knew of him, this was a result of how isolated he was. No. He was in his own little bubble, just sitting at his computer all day, not really showing these games to anyone, uh, not releasing them onto the internet, and so... He didn't have anyone outside of himself to connect with. He had no outlet to ground himself on. Alright, what's next? God, this game is just it's so emotional, you're right? Because he doesn't get it. He, like, it, it's it's a look from the in outside and then the inside. Like, we're hearing from the outside, okay? But we're literally seeing firsthand from the inside that... It's either that you're going to see it. This is hard. Like I said, this game is for creative people, okay? If you're not creative, you're not going to get this. And you're going to agree with the narrator, okay? But if you are, you are going to agree, agree with Coda, okay? And the thing is, the narrator, he believes that, you know, this guy's just hurting himself. And he's... he's, he's He's doing stupid. He needs to give up. He needs to, you know, it's cool what he's trying, but I mean, he's obviously not making it, so, you know, he needs to kind of give up. I mean, Coda, obviously, the reason he's doing this when he's hurt, when obviously something's going on, he, he just doesn't want to give up on it. Over and over and over, even if it hurts. So, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful game. You can't talk yourself out of loneliness. It doesn't work that way. You can't be the one writing both the questions and the answers. Then there's no movement. Then there's no circulation. 
If all okay, of your here anxieties we are. are being Where channeled into to your work, then if the work ever fails, you have no backup and you're just going to crash. What? You have to say that the game developer is simple and enjoys, and that you love it 100% of the time. Either... Oh, that feels wonderful. What's the seeing this game at the time that he made it, it looked really unhealthy to me. I was watching him do this to himself and I hated it. I hated seeing him so trapped. It's like video games are not worth this amount of suffering. This is someone I really cared about. And I used to get so much joy out of seeing him create. For him to suddenly become angry and frustrated like this. It was the worst thing for me. I don't know. This is what I felt at the time. I don't know how else to explain it. I wanted it to stop more than anything. I had never felt so rotten. I just... I needed more than I had <gasps> ever needed. Oh my god! To stop. But it didn't stop. After finishing this one, Coda takes another seven months and comes up with a new game. Wow. <gasps> the reason there's a freaking light at the end of every level is because there's always a light that you need to try and fight to find. Interesting. Hello, Gad. Ma'am. Glad to see you've arrived safely. We've captured the machine. It's waiting for you now. You can begin the interrogation whenever you like. I intend to be quick. Very good. Just be warned that someone called the press, so we might have a bit of uh, attention on this one. Also, one more thing that you should know about the machine it calls itself. Kota. That's interesting. So he's referring to himself as the machine. Machine. The, what? Yes, yes, don't worry. Questions later. Questions later. Yeah, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Stopped. Your work was keeping us alive. People. It was only because of you Christians that any of us can make it through the every day. I felt so alone. Or been so alone. I'm, I'm bad. I apologize. Apologize for leaving me. Yes, apologize. <laughs> no, nothing. All right, then I apologize to the people on your behalf. break this is this is hard oh my god this is a very emotionally challenging game I'm sorry it's just um this game you see if you're not getting it then well I'm not gonna spoil it I'm not I'm gonna say anything Look around here you can step back out the door you came in through 
My followers! Yes, my my followers! Yes! It falls on me to deliver bad news. The machine refuses to admit he deliberately hurt us. But this is not important. We are stronger than it thinks we are. We will find a way without it. We do not need its games. He's questioning his importance. Let us pay to its retribution. Let us show that we are not failures. Follow me. We will destroy. <gasps> what? No! Is that. What the f. I don't remember the. Gun out. Remember, you can click to fire the gun. What? He's defending against. What? Crawl, make sure you, your work dies. So now the work is becoming self-destructive. And I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head, and that it's having a very negative effect on him, and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work to people, to get some actual feedback on his games. It might get him out of isolation. And so, as I'm thinking this, I realize that I could be the one to initiate it. Because it would never occur to Coda to start actively soliciting feedback, so what if I did it for it? If he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings, would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Would it give him confidence in himself? Would it bring meaning back into his work? <gasps> oh, I don't... This is so hard. God. So I started showing Coda's work to people. I took this one, and the island which you just played, the theater, the notes, the house cleaning game, and some of the prison escape games. I brought them to people that I knew and, and trusted, and I asked their opinions. And the great part is that they really loved his games. You know, the point of it all is just to give them some external reference point, but they, they genuinely loved his work. There was nothing for him to be afraid of. I don't want to shoot it. Can you see why I felt like this was the right thing to do? Because it's the thing that I always feel like I need to be told that my work is good, that I am good. When, when someone really connects with a thing that I've made, when they see themselves purely in my work, there's nothing that feels better. And I got to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something, I really felt like I'd done something good, like, like I was a good person. I felt like there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves and I could fix it. If I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. I 
and they told me how much they enjoyed his games. The symbolism is, is the right now he's the, the narrator is a gun and so beautifully, beautifully happy. Um So anyway, Coda finishes this game and then really he just kind of takes off for a while. So this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Uh, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email, and it's got a private link to a new game of Coda's. This one is called The Tower, and to my knowledge, it's the last game that Coda ever made. So let's take a look. June 2011. Let's do it. And this is where I have trouble saying anything meaningful about Coda's work. Because more than Whoa. anything else, the tower just feels distant. It feels like it's trying to distance itself from the world. It's a very cold game. This room actually has a maze in it. Except that all the walls of the maze are invisible. And then every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise. So the experience is really miserable. The game goes beyond not being meant to be played. It actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. But I do want to show you the rest of the level. So when you're ready to continue, Press enter and I'll put a bridge over the mains. Thank you. Um, freaking Stanley Parable. Mmm, funny. Stanley, it's, it, that's that's Stanley Parable reference because the maybe it's just me, but um, yeah, I think it's I think it's funny. And to be fair, it's not like this is the first game that's needed some modification to be playable, like the house cleaning game. You know, that one used to actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. <laughs> I had to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the game would actually end. But that game had an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? The only way past this challenge is to randomly guess the six-digit code. Like the invisible maze, it's frustrating to me. Because it's the opposite of everything else that Coda has made. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me, except a lot of my time. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. I'll put the code on the ground for you here, though, so that we can move on. Man, this, this game honestly just it, it gives me so much because there's so much you can still like every single time I play I always look back on it I always think what could have been different about it I mean because there's so much that truly really I, I have to review it okay but there's so much that truly is just extraordinary and makes you realize makes you realize a lot about it And in the end, it makes you feel special. <laughs> and that was creeping me out. But yeah, I mean, truly, this game <sighs> has a special place in my heart. That's for sure. The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door, meaning that it's literally impossible to solve from this side. So even if you somehow brute forced your way through the first two challenges and you got to this point, there's actually just no way to progress. And it's scary for me, the idea of Coda cutting himself off entirely, just saying, you know, that's it, that's the end of the conversation, not giving me any way to fix the problem. I feel like a failure, I guess, when I can't fix the problem. But I can open this door for you, so 
Let me do that. <laughs> Was I a failure for not understanding this game? I don't know why I would be. It's not like everything needs to have a solution. But I feel it somehow. I feel like I failed. And I don't understand why. I remember. It's June of 2011. I'm playing this for the very first time. And as I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know this person. I have no idea who this person is. It wasn't the guy I knew. It wasn't my friend. I had come to so many conclusions from looking at all of his work up to this point, and then suddenly none of them... I had been trying to, though. That was the thing. For years, I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was and, and what he stood for. I asked him so many times to please just tell me what his games mean to him. I asked him please to tell me what the three dots mean. And he wouldn't. I, I just felt so strongly that if I could have connected with him, that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. It was that I needed to see myself in someone else. I needed to be someone other than me. But he stopped and left. And it felt somehow like I had failed. Mm. <sighs> this is a hard game. This is a hard game. Dear Davey, thank you for your interest in my games. I need I'm to ask you- I am the reason that you stopped making games, aren't I? It's because of what I did. I poisoned it for you. Uh. I don't think I ever told you this. But when I took your work and I was showing it to people, it actually felt... <laughs> it felt as though I were responsible for something important and valuable. You've, s you've so infected my the personal people space who played them, possible at. They treated me like I was important. They really listened and cared about what I had to say. Even though I was showing your work, it was... I felt good about myself. Finally. For a moment, while I had that, I liked myself. Would you stop changing my games? Stop adding lamp posts to them. He was the one that was adding lampposts. <sighs> because the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, God. Oh, no, I'm not crying. Mm-mm. 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 And then you stop. Would you simply and I didn't let have anything left be to with show you? I, I just had to be with myself. Would you and simply as soon let as them that be with happened, the there was no feeling at all. Nothing. When I'm Less around you, I feel nothing. physically sick. You desperately Less need that. something that I cannot give to you. I literally do not have it. <laughs> Struggling to come up with new ideas is not making me depressed. Low points are just part of the process. The fact that you think I am frustrated or broken says more about you than about me. Fuck, every fucking time, shit. <laughs> I realize that this doesn't make sense to you just yet. Which is fine. You're not my problem to solve. But I do hope that one day it clicks. 
that you make peace with this thing that you are wrestling. I'm afraid that I did something really stupid because I don't like myself. And when you finally see what I am talking about, don't say anything. That's why I'm releasing this collection of your work, is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything, and so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world, and if I put my name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you, so that I can tell you that I'm sorry. I know I screwed up. If I apologize- <gasps> The wall's closing in! Will you start making games again? Please, I need to feel okay with myself again. And I always felt okay as long as I had your work to see myself in. I mean, is, is something wrong with me? Because I know that I did an awful thing, and I'm doing it again right now. Like, I'm, I'm showing people your work, but I can't stop myself from doing it. That's how badly I need to feel something again. Like, I'm an addict. There has to be something wrong with me. Can I apologize? What if I tell you I was wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think it will, but there's nothing else that I can do. Just tell me what you want. See how the darkness is closing I'm sorry. in? When it I'm feels sorry. like there's nothing Please. else you can do. Start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put into your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. But I want to know how to, how to, I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I'm fading, and all I want is to know that I'm going to be okay. Oh, man. Mm. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. people telling me that I'm good. Always more, more, more. It's like a disease. Oh, the door open. I didn't even notice. <laughs> I'm silly. I guess if someone had told me ahead of time that he just really enjoyed making prison games, maybe I wouldn't have thought he was so desperate. I wouldn't have told so many people that he was depressed. Maybe he just likes making prisons. Even now, the disease is telling me to stop. Don't show people what a shitty person you are. They'll hate you.
I knew that my life depended on finding something to be driven by other than validation, what would that even be? <laughs> it's strange, but the thought of not being driven by external validation is unthinkable. Like, I actually cannot conceive of what that would be like. Now. I think I need to go. And I'm sorry, because I know that I said that I would be here and I, and I would walk you through this, but I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot that I need to make up for. And so I'm just gonna. Okay. I guess just you and me, guys. <laughs> because... You can tell he's basically... He's shut himself off as well. And it's becoming Coda. If you couldn't tell, obviously he broke down because things didn't go the way he wanted. Because Koda was the one that inspired him and based... And in a sense, slowly he became the same as Koda. Where he, he just gave up. He just... He gave in. tell through this game it shows you multiple time and again and again the example of its characters the example of its how you have to move through it you always have to keep going even when it's hard even when it seems impossible you gotta keep going and that's what makes this game so amazing because no matter the cost, even that, even even if the end, in order to reach that happiness, in order to reach that happiness, it, it, you're not looking for survival, because everyone can survive. What you're looking for is triumph. And in order to get that, in, in order to become not good, not average, but great. You need to give yourself, give up your everything, do what you believe in. And only if you can do that. Then you haven't given up.
Oh god. This game gets me every time, man. Every time. You see the story between Coda and you could say our main narrator, okay? Coda, he was the inspiration for the narrator. He kept trying and trying, and he, he said, in the very end, the main narrator said, if there isn't something for self-validation from an external source, basically, basically everyone else, if someone isn't saying, good job for what you do, then what's the point in doing it? And the point is, it's because it's what makes you happy. It's because it's what makes you passionate. It's because your creativity, th your creativity strives simply in the fact that you're doing what you love to do. And that's what's so amazing about the game, because that's what Cody did. He made games believing, making little stories about himself, about what he believed, about what he stood for about the story of his life and um he didn't give up even when it hurt even when you know it didn't feel good he, he kept going at it because he didn't want to give up you could see that through multiple examples and he wanted to teach it to the, his audience and his audience was himself so if he ever went back to these games he'd be like okay um so a good example is when he gets the staircase one even though it gets slower and slower and slower you just keep on going, even when things get hard, you know. Um, another example is the very end with the um, or or why you die in that little containment thing. Are you willing to give your everything towards what you believe in, and instead of just die? Because that's what that's not what happens. You don't just die. There's a reason you do it. There's a reason, the steps you take, this, the reasoning, that there's always a path and it, it leads to something much greater and that's why you rise up in the end. Because that's, that's how high you, st you, you stood for things. And, um, you see that the narrator, when he started to give up, when the other guy started to give up, he, he was inspired by him. And he didn't want to give up either because of the fact that he was inspired so much by Coda, and <laughs> thing is, then he just decided not to give up. He wanted to save his friend because he felt that was was right. He that was his passion because even though he, f <laughs> even though he felt like he was a bad person after showing his game to everyone. He basically answered his own question. How can you do something without self validation? And he didn't tell anyone that he was. He wanted to feel good about helping a friend. What he wanted was just to do it simply for his friend, and that's what made him happy. <laughs> and that was his validation. So, through Koda doing what he loves, through. Through the narrator, trying to help his friend no matter what. They both, because they were so passionate, because it was what they felt like was true through their hearts, because they felt morally that was what they were God given right to do. They kept going through it passionately. No matter how hard the road, no matter how long the road, no matter what kept them out of getting what was their dream, they kept going and going and going. And eventually, sadly, because of how bad things got, they both in the end gave up. And they were broke. <sighs> and the beautiful thing in the end is... Then you're left alone. And the reason the game leaves you alone like that is because then... Then it's up to you. The game says it's up to you. Because even though... Even though they both failed. Even though things got hard for them and they broke eventually. That doesn't mean you have to. And... 
it leaves you those last few moments because you walk down a long corridor by yourself when you could just quit the game, okay? You 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 have that final sequence with the, the sacrificial, you know, beam to die. And then when you rise up, it shows you that no matter the, no matter the course, no matter, you know, because your path is always going to be different. That's why it was that huge labyrinth of a maze. There's always something to look forward to. And that's why in the... Koda was like, stop adding those stupid lampposts. Because the lampposts... He wanted to give Koda something to begin at. Because the only way you fail... Is if you give up. So you might as well begin again. And again. And again. And that's why this game is called The Beginner's Guide. That's why it's a beautiful game. That's why it shows how much you need to persevere, how much you need to believe in yourself, how much, even when things get hard, even when the world tries to push you down, you begin again. And again. And again. <laughs> and you fight towards that dream. Give it everything you've got, even if it sacrifice yourself, because that is what you need to stand for. You need to wire yourself. And once you wire yourself, you don't stand for tragedy, you stand for triumph. And once you fight for it, once you fight for what you believe in, like Coda did many times trying to recreate the levels, like, like his friend tried many times trying to re-inspire his friend. You get back up again. And as you fail, he begin again and again and again. Until eventually you reach your end, your destination. <laughs> oh my god. I swear, I, mean, I, even, I, I always cry when I play this game. Every fucking time. <laughs> now, the reason this game stands out to me the most is because it's my favorite story German game. Because it's, it doesn't feature all the answers, okay? It's an honest to god game, and it means so much to me. Because I, I, I swear to god, I'll tell anyone, this is my favorite game of all time. And I love the thing I also love is it doesn't say start the game, it says begin the game. God. Everything in life is about beginning it, because many people are too afraid to even start it. I'm going. The reason this game is so important to me is because of what it stands for and how much how much I can relate to it. Because if you're not a creative person, you're not going to get this. You're not going to enjoy it as much. If you're a very a person that just cares about, you know, statistics and, you know, just how things are supposed to work. You're not going to get this. But if you're a person that truly appreciates determination, appreciates creativity, appreciates thinking outside of the box, uh, believing that there is always another way, then this game will stick out to you like a sore thumb. And this is why I love it so much. Why I want to symbolize what this game means. Because I swear, I always look at this every year. Either through my own, I remember like, uh, look at my old gameplay videos of it, or else I, um, I play it myself, but. The fact is, the game means much to me, it's because of what it stands for and what it's done for me. And the fact that this is how I want to stand, and even if I do fail at what I do, at this dream of mine, at this, you know, be trying to become a YouTuber, you know, so be it. Because at least I'll inspire someone. I just will give it all I got. At least I will stand for something. And I'll keep chasing a light. Even if it's dim. Even if it's surrounded by darkness. Something I can keep chasing on to. You know, how, no matter how road, hard the road gets, I can keep going. And every single time I get pushed down, I can begin again. And again. And again. I hope this gameplay was a lot for you and you enjoyed it. I hope maybe we connected a little bit. 
but this is this is one of the reasons why I want to become one of the best YouTubers ever, and why I want to fight to try and make my dream and many others come true. So I hope this made you smile. I hope this, I hope this, got me and you closer. Even though this is a webcam here, even though you know, I uh, this is just equipment. I hope you know that even though you're f so far away or you're, uh, you're so close. You may even be, you know, half away across the world. I can see you. And I do care. So as always, don't give up. Let's keep chasing this dream. And even if we fall, even if we get beat down to the lowest of the low, let's get up. Let's fight. And let's turn tragedy into triumph. Because again, failure, the number of times, it's just a digit. No matter how the emotion, no matter how blue I get, I, I don't care. I will stand for what I believe in. I'll keep fighting. And no matter how absurd the journey is, I hope you join me on it. So, I'm sorry this took so long, but I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I love you guys. If you haven't already, please sub sizzle. <laughs> Sorry for crying like a wimp. But truly, I'm grateful. And I can't wait to make this journey, this adventure, become something we never forget. Ain't that right, Margaret? <laughs> Until next time. My name is Bluege signing out. And I'll see you next time. In the next video. Until we begin again. Bye guys. Whoop. <laughs> Alright, how do we end this? Uh